Hello and welcome to my fourth video. Please bring in your coffee mug and an Oreo to this hands-on video. Yes, we are going to talk about Terraform and it's optimized to pass the interview. So come in with your computer and the terminal because we are going to both review the theory and do the practice. My suggestion is that we follow this uh, hands-on practice, it, although I'm reading many times off the documentation and trying off there, but when you're practicing it yourself, you'll get the concepts more easily. And also you'll find out where to find the documentation. So if in the, in the interview you have some situation like this, easily you can find a place. It's better than just watching the video. So please bring in your computer and a shell terminal and Docker Hub installed in there. Okay, let's go. Let's build the database server. So we are going to follow the same scenario that we followed in the Ansible. It's going to be like this. We are going to build a database server. For sure, it's going to be an SSD added to it for the machine and for the OS to boot from. We are going to have two SKI SCSI drives, mainly for the MSSQL. We are going to have a uh, SQL server plus configurations in there and we cannot bring in VM to the world without having a firewall. Don't forget this. Don't bring the VM to the world without a firewall and we are going to bring the firewall in there. So this one doing it manually will take two to five days. Yes, that's a nice animation. So imagine we have 10 servers. How we are going to do that? Two, 20 to 50 days just doing so? No. Uh, in the previous video, we introduced Ansible. So Ansible is a tool that you can bring in inside the machines and configure them. So whatever happens inside the machines, you do it with Ansible. Whatever it's outside of the machines, it's Terraform. So if you want to review here, uh, we can say iSCSI drive, attaching those ones and SSD to the machine and uh, firing up the VM is the Terraform's job. Configuring the SQL server, probably installing iSCSI drive's driver and having a firewall, that's the Ansible's job. Let's review the architecture of AWS Cloud with Terraform and Ansible. So here, we are, see, we are going to see it from the Terraform's viewpoint, so we are going to a bit neglect the Ansible part. So we are having a sample TF and Terraform TF bars. So the sample.tf uh, is the part that we are introducing these resources to the Terraform. It's just a file declarative way. We are going to uh, find out more about it in the future slides. And we have Terraform TF vars also that we are going to define our variables that they are going to be fed into the sample.tf. Terraform is going to get uh, these values as input and it's going to generate terraform.tf state that's going to be fed inside the Ansible and Ansible is going to go in and configure the VMs and anything like that. Ter Terraform itself is going to connect to the uh, AWS Cloud Providers API and basically uh, provision everything that is inside AWS. For, for example, in here we have a VPC that has two Amazon EC2 instances in there. Here we have it from another cloud provider's perspective, IBM, the cloud that nobody likes. And we have main.tf and we have Terraform TFRs. Again, the files are the same, if you notice. And we have Terraform TF state and uh, Terraform TFS state is going to uh, plug into Ansible and Ansible is going to configure the VM. Again, in here, Terraform is going to connect to IBM Cloud and IBM Cloud's API precisely and configure IBM Cloud from there. Uh, basically, we do not change anything inside main. We just change things for inside the Terraform virus. For the first example that we are going to do it together or probably see it in this lecture and video, Terraform VARs and TF, they are going to in the same place, but that's the general concept. We have a skeleton file that is in the main and we have the variable files, that is TF VARs. So let's see a sample config file. 
I put everything in here so that you are not going to be afraid or scared of the complexity of main.tf and you can read it if you are given inside the interview. So here we have Terraform, uh, defining the Terraform as a whole and we are saying that we have these required providers and we are saying that yes, we are going to have Google. And here we see uh, the source is HashiCorp slash Google. So we can have different providers and companies themselves, they can bring in some providers. So the source can be, for, for example, IBM or anything like that. The provider is Google. We identify that the provider, if the provider is Google, the, this is the credential file. We are going to add a credential file in there. We are going to say about the project ID. Usually in GCP, we have different project IDs. In the region, we are going to define the region and the zone is going to be defined in here. Each region can have multiple zones inside. And each zone can have, that's a tricky question, multiple data centers inside. And minimum is three data centers. And we are going to de uh, define a Google Compute Network so we are going to define basically a network that is VPC network, and we are going to just name it as Terraform network. So what this file does, if somebody asks us, it just provisions a network. The language that we saw there, it's just pretty easy. It's declarative and it's something specifically for HashiCorp or Terraform language, we can say. That is the final state, not the plan. Like we do not write about, okay, firstly do this and then do that. But what we do is just, we say that this is the what we want to have. Like that's the final state. It's very easy to have it. We have a block type, probably like resource you can see. You can have different uh, labels that's going to read from there. Okay, we are going to write about identifiers or write the identifiers in there. For example, the name or for example, the block, all of those ones. This way of defining the things, uh, the name is HashiCorp Configuration Language or HCL. Other languages are also supported inside the Terraform's platform. So we have HCL, probably human written. JSON, we have it, but it's not suggested for humans to write it. The best thing if you are generating the code with the machine or with any like scripts. The reason behind that is that many times you will find yourself uh, debugging a small error in the JSON. So prob probably a parentheses or something like that. And we can have Kubernetes CRDs and that is custom resources definitions. There is a new part that is coming here. Uh, Terraform is going to support languages like TypeScript and Python. And if you have been in the industry enough, you will know that Python is the main language that usually DevOps and SRE people are using, and that's the best language ever. What is the resource life cycle? Like we, either, we define the resource and what's going to be the life cycle of the resource. So imagine we are going to uh, write the main.tf, the one that I showed you, defining the VPC in Google. Then we are going to validate that resource to find out if it's working, if it's not working, if it's fine, the structure is fine or not. Your resource is going to say what the final state you want it to be. And there's a real world uh, situation currently. For example, now in Google probably will not have anything and you're identifying to have a VPC. So when you go to this diff stage, it's just comparing these two. And after comparing these two, it's going to feed that one to the plan. So what the plan stage does is just gets those things. So it says that this is the final stage that I want to be in. This is the current stage and what are the steps to reach there? And it's kind of like dependency graphs that is going to uh, take care of them. So for example, in our VM example, you want to make sure that you provision the sta storages beforehand uh, before you just start up the VM. So Terraform will take care of all of those ones. And it's going to step-by-step step apply the plan and then do a diff. So what happens in here is that if inside the diff stage, we are going to face an error, what happens is it's going to be marked or that resource is going to mark as tain. So in the next step of the plan that's going to run, it's going to mark as tain 
and it's planned to delete and again this cycle happens again let's do go and start the hands-on part with some coffee okay so over here we have our uh, hashicorp website learn.hashicorp.com installing the terra okay this one is needed and verifying the installation build the infrastructure sure prerequisite good okay we have the account the system with terraform installed yes we just did that let's go to the next one configuration what we are going to do in here is probably yes that's what you're going to do ls mkdir let's go to the home cd home ls mkdir terraform ls cd terraform by the way i created the credentials.json in there uh, i didn't show you because that's something that i should keep as secret name the tf let's put it there copy and then put it here okay we can keep it as is for here uh let's see the i yes that's what you want to have it and here the credentials is credentials yep that's done let's go to the next one so this is the file that we reviewed in our lecture slide terraform in it good so it's initialized and let's create the resource terraform apply let's say yes ls so you can see here main.tf is our file credentials.json and also we have terraform. so that's the current state of the system so this file is going to fed inside the Ansible and Ansible is going to take care of this stuff. Changing the infrastructure. What's going to add in here? So the network in here, we have a boot disk. Okay, VM instance, vim main.tf. If you see here, it says that Google underlying computer net network. So that's this one. So it's referencing this one. So it says that the network interface should be something that has been created in here or created before. And it's going to create a boot disk in here. And it's going to use Debian. The machine is going to be F1 micro. That's the cheapest machine of the Google. And yep, yeah, actually I'm excited. Let's do it. Terraform apply. It should be inside my compute engines. Terraform instance. Yes. Okay, this is a VPC that is added. Terraform network. Let's check our resources again. So we have Terraform network as VPC in here. You can see it. And this one is Terraform instance. And it's in here. And it's using Debian. Okay, nice. And now let's destroy it. see if this one is completely deleted yes there is no instance in there and everything is done to destroy it yes so we have done it that was almost a good intro to terraform i think we have we reviewed the theoretical part of it we did some hands-on part about it we learned about terraform's main file about the language hcl hashicorp configuration language yes 
we on, we learned also that we can configure these Terraform with different languages. HCL is one of them. JSON is one of them, although it's not uh, suggested. We have also the Kubernetes uh, custom resources, and we are having Python and TypeScript to uh, define these Terraform resources. So we have learned all of these ones. We have had a hands-on practice. For the next one, what we are going to do is marry Terraform with Ansible to create a good machine. Yep. So, yep, that's it. Thank you and have a great day.